prevent spreading of the virus, Ebola patients and suspected cases need to be transported in a safe way. Step 1. Prepare the team, equipment, and ambulance. Assemble the team. Two hygienists, one medical worker, one health promoter, one driver. Load the equipment. Load and properly place the following equipment in the ambulance. Satellite phone, six sets of personal protective equipment, or PPE, including hygiene and cleaning gloves. Two sprayers with 0.5% chlorine solution. Mattress with plastic cover. Final stretcher in case the patient can't walk. Something easy to disinfect to help the patient step into the back of the car if needed. Bucket for vomit. One liter hand spare with 0.05% chlorine. Thermometer. 10 plastic garbage bags. Hand soap. One kilogram of chlorine and one measuring spoon. 10 liter gallon filled with water to mix more chlorine if needed. Bucket with cover to keep protective items after use. A yellow bucket with cover for waste during the transportation of the patient. Wiping pads, tape, plastic cups, food, oral rehydration salts, one liter and an added liter for each hour of transport. Bottle of water for each patient. Replace the items immediately after use. The equipment must always be ready to use. The ambulance. The driver should check that the ambulance is in good condition and has enough fuel. The driver needs to know the procedures. Make sure the driver has enough food and drink. The patient will be transported in a different car than the team. Step two, boarding of the patient into the car. When you arrive in the community, the health promoter will get out of the car to confirm whether the patient transport will go on. All others must remain in the car until confirmed. The driver should stay in the car the whole time. The health promoter should wear normal clothes and be accessible for the community. They should keep a safe distance of two meters from the patient. They do not need PPE. The health promoter will explain to the family and the community the steps in transporting the patient. Transfer of a person can lead to highly emotional and tense situations. Explain the reasons to the family and the community to avoid misunderstanding and mistrust. Reassure and comfort the patient so they are psychologically well prepared. Explain what is available in the ambulance. Food, water, oral rehydration salts, and a bucket for vomit. Encourage the patient to drink as much oral rehydration salts as possible. There are two ways of transporting the patient. One, the patient can walk alone without help. Ask the patient to move into the back of the ambulance. The patient must not touch the outside of the ambulance. There is no need to wear PPE if the patient will not be touched and the team can keep a safe distance of two meters. Two, the patient is too weak to walk. At least three people dressed in full PPE, two to assist the patient and one sprayer. Four people if a stretcher is needed. Move the patient and secure the patient inside the ambulance. Dress into PPE and undress in front of the community. If the patient is heavy, more people need to wear PPE. Do not touch the driver's side of the car while wearing PPE. Only touch the outside of the vehicle if absolutely necessary. Once the patient is inside the ambulance, disinfect the back of the ambulance, close and disinfect the door using 0.5% chlorine. Step three, transport of the patient. The driver should stay in the driving seat and not have any interaction with the patient or the back of the car. One person should assist the driver with a spare set of PPE. Step four, removing the patient. Inform the Ebola Treatment Center of the departure time and the time of arrival. The treatment center team will move the patient and manage the waste and disinfection. Before opening the doors, they will spray the back of the ambulance 
with 0.5% chlorine. If the patient can walk, he or she will be asked to move out of the ambulance without touching the outside. Wear PPE if the patient requires assistance to move, and also when going inside the ambulance to remove any items, such as buckets containing vomit, garbage, and any other items. Step five, disinfection of the ambulance. After removing the patient, the back of the ambulance will be completely washed and sprayed by a team of two hygienists. First, the back of the ambulance, the door, then the back step, then the inside. The steps in clean the ambulance are, spray the back of the ambulance, focus on the door handles, other places patients may have touched, and the back step. Open the back doors of the ambulance. To touch anything touched by the patient, wear examination gloves. Spray the gloves before removal. Spray the inside of the bag with 0.5% chlorine first. Spray any waste or fluids left inside the ambulance and then put all waste from the car into a garbage bag. Close garbage bag, spray it, and place it into a waste zone. Thoroughly spray the entire inside of the ambulance, roof, walls, stretchers, floor, inside of doors. Remove the stretcher and mattress, disinfect and allow to dry. Thoroughly rinse the inside of the ambulance with fresh water. Be careful not to splash forcefully or use excessive amounts of water. Close the back doors of the ambulance. Spray the backside of the ambulance and any other places the patient may have touched. Carefully wash the backside of the ambulance with clean water. Spray the area where the disinfection has taken place once the ambulance leaves. Close and spray the gate to the high-risk area. Replace all items immediately after use. The equipment must always be ready to use.